Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Camera Tuesday, we're going to talk about Blackmagic Studio Camera 4K. So let's dive right into it. Now, this puppy is a studio camera. What does that mean? That simply means this should be used as an electronic news gathering medium, broadcasting medium. You are having live shows where you can utilize this puppy. This is not a, like a you know, point and shoot kind of camera where you take a video and then you do post processing it's like a studio broadcast camera now if you buy the pro end version of it you can get tri level syncing which is a, almost a compulsory for broadcast level general gen lock now gen lock allows you to like you know make sure you have multiple cameras synced properly throughout very long duration for example let's say uh, you can start with a time code most camera will remain synced for first hour after that they will start to drift and if you go like three four hours they will you will notice literally audio will be either coming too far or too late simply because there is no generation lock on that so gen lock generator lock is needed for that so that is a compulsory requirement for broadcast industry and this puppy has a huge display as in seven inch display so that is good as in like we are used to five inch uh, or six inch display on our mobile phone seven inch good and it's like 1920 by 1200 display so that also has the another advantage that this is made as a broadcast camera so it has like fixed a ratio of 16 by 9 now this display is 16 by 10 what does that mean that simply means yeah that you have enough top and bottom space that you can have like like, you know file recording and name and all that jazz and audio meter in the bottom without taking up real estate on your main image so that's awesome and in the pro variant it goes up to 2000 nits that is idiotically bright that is so bright that is almost hdr certified like good hdr certification requires 1000 nits pro level hdr certification is 4000 nits so it's almost in half of that so it's big it's bright it's very useful and they uh, give you a very high quality uh, sun hood so you can utilize that in broad daylight and then uh, you have to understand this is a broadcast camera so they are not expecting you to have like you know put sd card into it or cfast card into it or like you know compact uh, cards into that they're not expecting you to do that but in some scenarios you may need to do that let's say you want to like you know hey uh, broadcasting is not happening right now but i do want to record from this you can put uh, basically expat uh, formatted ssds uh, high quality ssds using usb c and you can record on them and it allows you to do that parallelly to two equipments and it has proper intercom this is a kind of compulsory system that we do not see what these are the things that are happening behind the scene whenever you see a tv broadcast or a stage show things of that nature these are happening behind the scene and that requires proper intercom especially if you have multiple camera so in this sort of scenario they have a proper uh, high quality uh, intercom system built into it a good quality tally light as in huge tally light so you cannot miss which camera is on. so you can be like camera what do you think about this camera what do you think about that what do you think about that so whenever you see like you know cameraman is looking directly into that that's primary because of tally light otherwise there is no way to uh, you know tell someone unless you are start yelling it's like hey look at me so we need tally light so this is a proper studio camera and it's surprisingly low budget for what it is now they have two models which is a bit weird but they do have two models for uh, first model is 4k plus now if all you want to do is do a proper setup proper uh, like you know you want to have a joe rogan kind of podcast and you want to do it for long durations people would urge you to go with this because if they have stripped out almost all functions it does not have ether uh, you know 10 gbps ethernet it does not have sti systems they have stripped down all the extra x input and output that you need. it still has that uh, like you know usb a and uh, basically two usb c and i really love the fact that there's some somebody thought of that that USB C is non locking connector meaning if the connector comes loose you lose everything so fundamentally there is a screw mount so you can buy special uh, basically jacks that you can plug there tight it and then it's not gonna fall out even if you are shaking it or something like that so that's awesome and you get that in like you know cheap variant and pro variant both of them so if all you want to do is utilize this puppy as a proper uh, live streaming broadcast camera using HDMI just buy the cheap one and cheap one is like around 1 lakh 12,000 which is surprisingly low that's like almost uh, cheaper than Sony a7c so uh, that is really low cost for a proper uh, broadcast grade camera that's a good and then you have 4k pro variant now 4k pro variant is like they're expecting you to use this like you know in serious scenarios you have dual SDIs what does that mean one is input one is output input uh, input you may like why the heck it needs input think of it this way let's say you have a cameraman who's looking into it and you see in news channels they will like you know uh, directly a graphic will coming from the side and then you'll have a cameraman directly focusing on here how the heck he knows where to focus because he's getting the live feed through sdi in so he knows like where to uh, uh, you know aim the camera that's why like all broadcast camera have sdi in and out it needs a independent feed so it has that puppy and it has ethernet so if you want to do a network setup when you want to utilize a lot of cameras network setups actually be starts to become far more cheaper because networks is designed with like you know multiple clients sdi is good and all that but it's only for 
for like you know two five six ten something like that networking is like bro i can handle 100 so you have ethernet it has two xlr input which is really good and it also has five pin xlr headset connection I, I did not even knew that this puppy existed but apparently it's a very uh, you know pro end system for intercom uh, intercoms that are like very reliable like you know that's that can go through abuse for decades and they still work so uh, this is almost a pro ends equipment like most people don't even know what these things do uh, so what are the use cases of this well use cases of this is like if you want a low budget permanent studio setup for example uh, this sort of camera is not a run and gun scenario you have to set it up you have to have a control room also because while these camera can you can set everything you need to do on uh, you know on the camera itself ideally you're supposed to you know collect data from the camera and fine tune it on a big display so because again there's, there's supposed to be a video village whenever you are utilizing this so if you have a permanent setup and you have some individual who's taking care of that situation this makes perfect sense for podcast kind of environment and you have complete remote control over the camera so a white balance everything all things can be changed on the fly now like why the heck you want to change it on the fly things happen especially in if you are talking about long podcast where people are talking for a few hours you literally will have a scenario where your white balance from the sky would change so you do need the sort of controls and be mindful these sort of things always happen in behind the scene it's always happening it's just that if the person that is behind the uh, you know controls of the camera is good you will never notice it you will just like it's a good looking picture so full broadcast level functionality is pre-built into that so what does that mean that simply means let's say you bought the pro end variant and you started with that you built a setup everything was nice and then you went from youtube to some uh, big channel or you went from Twitch to some big channel where it's like, you know, I like your show, I wanted to on my system. Let's have cooking shows, things of that nature. In those sort of scenario, uh, this equipment will switch over to that easily. It's like, don't even think about it. Minor, uh, you have to add this or that and then done. go home, sweet dreams. That's awesome. And it's much better for a long form complex podcast. So what does that mean? That means if you are talking about a podcast where you uh, want to have long format, like two hours, three hours or six hours, this is the uh, kind of equipment you need. You can do a, a 20 minute podcast with any camera. Why? Because the moment you start to exceed that timeline, most cameras have what we call recording limits, 30 minutes, unless you are talking about Sony. Sony do not have 30 minute recording limit. Now, again, there was a law in European Union that forced a tax bracket on a video recording limit. That has been removed i have no idea why the heck canon camera still has that and you cannot even say that overheating is an issue because if you can bypass that you can easily record for like you know two three hours continuously is that that limitation is really frustrating so that's flat out uh, rolls out many things and on top of that th this sort of camera is designed in such a way that it does not even have a battery it does not have a, any system where you can be like is it reliable enough everything from the in this puppy is built for proper high-end use so you have a person behind the camera and screen is display is big and bright enough where you can like fine-tune the goddamn thing right there you don't have to oh damn if i had the white balance shifted or you know a little bit to left or a little bit right I, it would be perfect you don't have to that and if you are in a dynamic scenario you can have a control village who is just like you know taking care of the situation you don't even have to think about it so this is really good for those sort of scenario low budget and like especially if you are just launching a big tv show where you want to do live broadcasting and all that you're not gonna invest in boatload of uh, super expensive cameras but there are something odd about this equipment. Primary odd thing is that this system is not using a lens mount that is suited for studio use. They are utilizing Micro Four Third. Now, Micro Four Third is not good in a healthy scenario. And not to mention, they flat out say, uh, like, you know, we can use Panasonic and Olympus lenses. I'm like, Olympus left the game. So fundamentally, you only have Panasonic. And they are saying, like, we can support power zoom system. There are only four lenses that have that. And there is a gentleman who did in-depth thorough analysis of all that, is that power zoom was always used as a gimmick. Like, there is power zoom that is used in, uh, you know, your actual uh, news gathering equipments. And you have power zoom that is you know low budget sony uh, aps-c camera lenses and all that jazz so those uh, low budget aps-c uh, micro four third equipment they are very low optically meaning you can put a sensor that is like you know uh, 4k behind that their optical resolution is barely 3 megapixel 2 megapixel is, is bare minimum you needed for full hd so fundamentally they are not sharp enough you can put 4k behind it it's not gonna do much so that is a very odd system and on top of that for a video setup you need power focal lenses meaning if you focus on something you're like okay i'm gonna focus on that you should be able to move in and out without like you know the framing uh you know having that focus breathing kind of system and like you know uh, end up defocusing where you have to compensate for that so power focal lens is a requirement for a uh, video system especially for uh you know where your video you're doing video when you're talking about cinema it's like a composite sort you, you composite it when you're talking about video as in like a 
uh, broadcasting it's like everything is happening right now so our focal is a compulsory requirement so you go into canon's cine lineup cine lineup lenses or broadcast lineup lenses they all have power focal which is a compulsory requirement you can go into fuji non systems they have a very good power focal lens setups it's always required micro four third does not have that so it's like why and you may be like is there any other lens mount they could have used that uh, according to the gentleman b4 mount could have been used now b4 mount is already been used in industry for long ago and it's like a primary whenever you see a, a news agency using what we call electronic news gathering meaning a small handy cam like this and it has a replaceable lens generally that's the format that is being utilized and they could have even went to APS-C sim because that power focal lens lot of power focal lenses are for uh, micro four uh, basically APS-C system so if they had utilized APS-C system they would have what they would have uh, you know a little bit of crop but it would have been manageable so uh, I really did not get that like why they are utilizing micro four third on top of that making two models is a uh, it does I do get that uh, you know appeal of that but making two models is really bad for both of them because that hates mass production you always want to make one thing and mass produce as much as possible that is the easiest way to reduce your cost if you ever want to see extreme example of that look into spacex uh, so that's the why the moment you start to make two models you make both models more expensive because think of it this way if you go to like hey i want uh, 100k uh, monitors for that is 700 nits display for the non uh, you know pro variant and i need 2000 nit variant for a uh, basically pro variant now you have to have two SKUs. now you have to have two inventories independently controlling from each other so you can have the supply chain and that goes for everything from side plates to jacks to connectors and everything so that fundamentally raises the cost so they have like 43,000 rupees gap between these two model uh, basic variant and pro variant I'm pretty sure if they had only launched one unit uh, basically one variant they could have easily dropped the price basically the total price uh, to around 20,000 so now you're like hey it's still a bit higher than the basic one but they would not have the issue where it's like you know if one of them succeeds which always happens whenever you launch something like this one of them will be succeed compared to other it will like other one would be like you know always available in stock and the one that you want it would be out of stock so that's why i really did not get these two things are kind of odd to me but again it's their company they can do whatever they want and uh, you know micro fourth third really not healthy so this was my presentation on uh, basically Blackmagic Studio Camera 4K. Hopefully you have liked it, learned from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst your friends. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show me an extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.